Hey everyone, in this video, we're going to talk about a concept that's kind of particular to Python called mutability versus immutability. Now, when I first learned this concept, I kind of just learned it at a surface level where I learned that certain data types are mutable, aka they can be changed, and certain data types are immutable, where they can't be changed. And I thought that was the end of the story, nothing more to be said. But as I grew a little bit and I learned more about the language and the intricacies of the language, I realized that that's not really a good enough understanding of this concept. And furthermore, I learned that starting with these ideas of mutability and immutability might not be the right way to go. So we will arrive at those definitions throughout the course of this video, but I think the best way to understand all this is to start with the ID function. So that's what we'll do here. The ID function is this really cool function in Python, which lets you get the memory address of any variable. So it basically tells you where in memory that data is stored. So the first thing we'll do in this video is just show how to use the ID function on a couple different data types. So here I have x equals 1, so this is just an integer. I can do ID of x, and it prints out this really long number, which basically just tells me where in memory this variable is stored. I can do the same thing for literally any data type or variable in Python. So I have y being a list containing 1, 2, 3. I can do ID of y, and it tells me where y is stored. z is a dictionary here, and I can also do ID of z. So um, one thing to note is that these memory addresses are all different, of course, because these are three different variables. So they live at different places in memory. Now, the way we'll proceed through this video is just doing a bunch of experiments and seeing what the results are and using that to form the correct definitions of mutability and immutability in Python. We'll start off really simple with experiment one, which is just reassigning a number. So I have x is equal to one. Let me grab the ID. So it ends in nine, two, eight. If I do x is equal to 2, notice I use the same variable name. If I do id of x now, it's a different id. We see it ends in 960. So we see that reassigning a number basically creates a new location in memory. It's not using the same x, which is one misconception people think is that here x is 1. And it looks like in this line, all I'm doing is basically just saying keep the same variable x and reassign it a new value. But actually, it's creating a completely new data object in memory as we can see by these IDs being different. So that's the first observation. And that's what this line is saying here with the result. Now let's address another misconception. Let's see what happens when we try to add to an existing variable. So here we have x is equal to 3. We get the ID ending in 992. We do x plus equals 1. So this is a simple enough syntax most people have seen where we just increment a variable by 1. And of course we get x is now 4, so everything works as expected. But the big question is what happens if I do ID x at this point? We see, maybe surprisingly, that we have an ID that ends in 0 to 4. So the ID of x has changed, even though it seems like all I did is just increment an existing variable by 1. So this is where I want to introduce the definition of immutability. We see through these two examples, there's no way for me to affect the value that is at the variable x without also affecting where that data is stored. And that's what it means to be immutable. Basically what that means is once I create a variable, so once I create this integer x which is equal to 3, there's no way I can change the data that is stored at that memory address. Basically if I do something that looks like it's changing that data, behind the scenes I'm actually storing it at a different place in memory altogether. And this is usually hidden from the user, which is why it's easy to form these misconceptions in our minds. But it's important to know, especially when we get to some confusing cases, maybe at the end of this video, that this is the behavior we get in Python. So again, the result here is saying the ID changes. So this is fundamentally a different object in memory. And to elaborate what I mean, this x we get, which has the value 4, is a different object in memory than this initial x we started with, which had a value of 3. And we can prove that because the IDs are different. Okay, so we can also get an idea of what this plus equals is doing based on this behavior. It's doing two things. It's creating a new object in memory. Where is that new object? It's at this new memory address. And what value shall it put at that object? It's going to put the value of the previous x plus 1, which ends up being 4. Okay, so the conclusion is that we cannot change the value of the original object, and that's why we call numbers, and I made a mistake here, immutable. Okay. So let's do another experiment with a list. Now we have a list that contains just the number 1, so a very simple list. Let's get the ID again, so we see it ends in 392. What happens when I use the append method of a list and I do list.append2? Of course, the expected output is that this L now contains 1 and 2, 
But based on all our discussions above, the big question is, has the ID of L changed? We see before it was ending in 8392. We see the ID is actually the exact same. So this is an interesting difference from all the behavior we just saw with the integer, is that I am allowed to change this list. I'm not creating a new list somewhere else in memory by doing this append function. I am indeed changing the same object in memory, as proved by these IDs being the exact same thing. So the result is the ID is the same, so this is the same object in memory. Now another misconception is that this is always the way it behaves with lists, but that's not true. That's just because I use the append function, which gives me the ability to change an existing list in memory. I can also have the same behavior as with the integer, where I have a new list that has one, two, which is separate from the original list. Let's see that in experiment four. Experiment four looks very similar to experiment three. I create again a list, this time with zero in it. I get the ID. And I also create a list now, which is gonna end up being zero, one, but I do it in a different way. Whereas before I used the append function, here I use the plus operator. So I do L is equal to L plus list one, which as expected causes L to be zero, one, because it had one added to the end of it. But the interesting thing here is that the ID of L has changed. Notice it ends in 288, whereas before it was 656. And that kind of begs the question about how is this different from what happened above if it looks like it has the same result? Well, the fundamental thing that's happening here is that we're doing an assignment. So if you want to see what happens step by step, we're taking something called L, which is initially this L here. We're doing plus one to it. And this whole thing is creating a new variable somewhere else in memory. Where is that? That's at this new memory address. And it's storing at that new memory address L plus one, which would be the list zero one. So this L we're seeing here, which is the result of this line, is it a different memory address than the initial L we created. So this experiment was just to show that just because we do have the ability to keep a list at the same place and change it there, doesn't mean that that's always what's gonna happen. We have to keep in mind which operation we did in order to get the new list. So the result is this ID is different, so this is a new object in memory. We can also break down what this does. It basically creates a new object in memory, and to that new object, the value that gets assigned is the old L plus one, which ends up being zero one. Now I wanna do one more experiment. So I think this is actually experiment five. So this is experiment five. And here we do a similar thing. We do L is equal to zero, we get the ID. We do plus equals here. So one conception you might have is this plus equals should behave the same as this longer notation, but let's see what actually happens. So we see that L ends up being zero one because we plus equals this list to the end of it. But notice the ID is actually the same. So actually plus equals operates like append where it's not changing the ID. It's changing the list in place at the same memory address. Now I know this might seem confusing, but the conclusion based on these last three experiments we did with lists is that using certain operations, so such as the dot append or plus equals, we do have the ability to change the value at the original object, so at the original memory location. But that's not necessarily always the behavior, as we saw with this longer equals plus notation. But the fact that we do have the ability to do this in Python means that lists are mutable, which means we do have a way or a couple ways to change the data at the object where the list is living, whereas we did not have any way to do that with an integer. So that's the key distinction between mutability and immutability. With immutability, there is no way for us to write code to change the data that's stored at that initial memory address. With mutable things like lists and sets and dictionaries, there are ways for us to change the data that's living at that initial memory address, but that doesn't mean that that's always the way it's going to happen. Now to really hit home our understanding, we're gonna do a couple of check your understanding questions just to concrete some ideas. So in the first one, we have L1 is equal to this list zero, L2 is this list zero, and we grab their IDs and put them in these respective variables. The first thing is L1 equals equals L2. That's true because this equals equals basically just checks if the values of two things are the same. And the value of L1 is this list zero. The value of L2 is this list zero. So they are the same. But are their IDs the same? So basically if I do original ID of list one, which is the ID of list one is equal to original ID of list two, that's false because although their values are the same, we see from this line that they are at two separate locations in memory. So that's why we get the output that we do.
Now what I'll do is l1.append1, and I'll do l2 equals l2 plus 1. So in both cases, list1 and list2 will be 0, 1, because I'm adding the number 1 to the end of both lists, but I do it in two separate ways. And if you remember what we saw above in experiments 3 and 4, I believe, then we see that the ID of L1 equal to original ID 1 is true, because by using append, I don't actually change the memory location. I just operate at the same memory location. But using this longer syntax to do the same thing, I do fundamentally change the memory location of L2. So now we don't have that the current ID of L2 is equal to the original ID of L2. That's false. The next one we'll look at is maybe a little bit more complicated, but I still want to work through all the tricky things that you could end up seeing in your work. So here I have L is equal to list 0. L1 is equal to a list which contains L, L being this guy. L2 is also a list which contains L, which is again this guy. Now, I think this can be a little bit confusing by just looking at it, so I have created a very crude picture that I would like to show you here. So this is my very crude picture of the situation. So remember, the first thing we did is that big L is this list 0. L1 was a list containing L. So it's actually a list which contains a reference, so that reference is given by this arrow, to the data that's stored at L, which is 0. And L2 is exactly the same thing. It's a list which contains a reference to big L, which is this 0. Now looking at this picture gives us a much better idea of what's going on. So now let's see what happens if I do id of big L is equal to id of big L at 0, so the first element. Now L1, now let's see what happens if I do id of L is equal to id of L1, 0. Now L1 at 0 is saying what's the first element of L1? If I look here, that's L itself. So that's why id of L is the same thing as id of L1 at 0 because they are both L. And same thing for list 2. So make sure you understand that. But if I do id of L1 is equals to id of L2, that's false. Because if I look at these two things, and again, let me pull up the picture to drive this point home. We see that L1 being this is a separate thing from L2, which is this. Although their zeroth elements are respectively the same thing. So it's a subtle thing, but... Hopefully this picture helps make it a little more clear. Now, furthermore, what happens when I do l10.append1? Now let's trace through it. l10 is the list l itself. Now if I append 1 to that, that's going to actually end up changing this list big L, because it is referencing exactly this list l. So that's why if I do l10.append1, and then I print out l, l has been changed, because it was being referenced by L10. This is the same thing. Now, similarly, if I were to do L.append2, so now it would be 0, 1, 2, and then I print out L2, for example, we see L2 contains 0, 1, 2, because L2, based on the picture, is literally just a reference to L inside of a list. So that's why everything gets changed when we change L or L10 or if we had changed L20. So I do realize that this example can be confusing, but go ahead and draw the picture for yourself on a piece of paper or rewind this video a little bit and try to understand exactly what's going on. So hopefully that helps you understand mutability versus immutability a little bit better. I do think that it's helpful to not start from those definitions, but rather start from the ID function and do your own experiments to see in which cases the ID is changing and in which cases it's not changing. And then based on those experiments, create the definition of mutability and immutability that exist. So if you have any more questions, please leave them in the comments below. I do understand this is kind of a subtle and maybe difficult topic for a lot of people, so I'll do my best to try and clarify where I can. And until next time.